Hi guys, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Got my, another video coming out. I just did one on the temple, uh, the holy temple of God. Uh, this one is going to be about the Ark of the Covenant. Um, I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions going on. I see a lot of them going on. A lot of arguing and a lot of contention. And look guys, and I've said this in other videos, don't argue about the little things. If it doesn't pertain to your salvation and your uh, righteousness or getting somebody else to the Lord so they can be saved all that little stuff that we disagree on like the rapture the ark the temple all that stuff those little things don't matter because Jesus said that whenever uh, in heaven we get to heaven all knowledge will be made known so those little things like that that we disagree on aren't going to matter and what you don't want to do is when you get into an argument about little stuff like that it causes a division between Christians and you can actually push somebody to walk away from their faith of that. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that because that's going to shine badly on you. Because their blood, if they they get destroyed and they get put in hell, their blood is on your hands. Because you decided you wanted to argue about something that doesn't really matter that much anyway. We can all agree to disagree. We're all in Christ together. And we don't want the body of Christ to fight against itself. So if you disagree with somebody, uh, post, mid, pre-rapture um, the ark is under the temple mount the ark is in Ethiopia which it's not that's not there's, there's something else there um, or it's under that down by the park there or the garden where the garden tomb is around the corner there by Golgotha it doesn't matter about that stuff because the part that really matters is when those things are brought to pass as far as the tribulation goes because those are your indicators and your signs to show you where we're at. And you can go through the Bible and you can see it. So, please guys, don't argue about this stuff. I see the comments on a lot of people's videos. Y'all telling each other, well, you're wrong, you're wrong. Well, actually, you could be wrong too. And I said it in several of my videos. Don't, don't believe me. I'm, I'm fallible because I'm human. And I could be wrong. Everybody sees Bible prophecy differently. Go do the research. Get into the Word. Get online, look it up for yourself, and prove it to yourself. And if your, your view is a little different than other people's, well, that's okay. Uh, I'll give you an example. The, the two witnesses that are supposed to come, the, what the Bible describes, when you first read it and first look at it, it, is, it looks like it describes two people. But I've seen evidence here very recently, this week, that that actually may not be the case. Because... It refers to them, and this is another video, but it refers to them as two olive trees or two lampstands. Now, when you go and you look up what the Bible describes as the two olive trees, it one is wild and one is cultivated. The cultivated one is the Jewish people. The wild one is the, is the um, is us, all the Christians that have uh, that are out here in the world. Um, you have to excuse my thought process. I had a TBI and it uh, caused my short-term memory to stop Gent Gentiles so the wild one is the Gentiles so when you go look at the lampstands and look at what the Bible talks about lampstands and how it refers to them it shows Jesus standing in between two lampstands well the two lampstands are represented as Israel and the Gentiles the Christian church because all that is the body of the Christ so then you go back and you reread again and you get a different look at, well, it's not going to be two people. It's going to be two groups of people that are going to witness and that are going to be destroyed and then they're going to rise up again and then they're going to be taken up into heaven. So it, get, it helps you look at Bible Scripture a little different when you dig into it a little differently. Um, there's a guy that has a YouTube page called uh, AOC. It's capital A, little o, capital C Productions. Um, or ministries and you can go look him up and look at uh, some of the stuff that he's gone through uh, he's really on top of how the Bible works and how it talks to us and how it shows us things and it's very simple easy to understand and we can all do it ourselves and he gives a, a link to a tool that he's using he uses Strom's Concordance uh, versus King James Version Bible and shows translations and everything in it and it's a computer program for your PC really really good to go look at that stuff so let's get into this. Uh, the Ark, what is it? Well, the Ark of the Covenant is the, uh, here is the case that holds the Ten Commandments, and it represents the covenant God had with the Israeli people, the Jewish people. And 
when Jesus performed his act of kindness for us and, and achieved salvation for us and shed his blood, his blood, if you believe where the ark is, according to what Ron Wyatt had found, if his blood hit the mercy seat and the new covenant was made. So we could be redeemed and we could be able to enter into heaven through his grace and through his act and through his blood. Um, in heaven, there is a holy temple that is for God. And he has an ark up there too. So there's there's an earthly, a physical representation and a spiritual representation that exists up there. And what it is, that's his throne. That's his seat that exists in there. Uh, and it's, it's a covenant. He keeps his covenant. So he has one there. He has it here. There's two representations of the same thing. So we hit some scripture, Revelations 11:19. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of the Covenant was seen within his temple. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. So that right there describes the spiritual representation of God's temple and the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, Exodus 37, 1-9. Uh, Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood two cubits and a half with its length and a cubit and a half with its breadth and a cubit and a half its height and he overlaid it with pure gold inside and outside and made a molding of gold around it and he cast it cast for it four rings of gold for its four feet two rings on its one side and two on its other side and he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold and put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark. So there's your description of what he built, the earthly version of it. And uh, whenever you go look up, if you look look up Ron Wyatt Discoveries and look what he found with the ark, uh, what he found that fits that to a T. So I'm pretty sure that's where it's at, but you can't get to it anyway. So don't, don't fly over to Israel trying to think you're going to go get it. Because in the 96 people tried to crawl into that cave and they all died very horribly. And they, they only made it 70 feet into the cave. So, don't get an idea in your head you're going to go see the Ark. We'll get to see it soon enough. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find some that pertain... Okay, Deuteronomy 10.8, At that time the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant to the Lord, of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister to Him, and to bless in His name to this day. So, what is that telling you? That That's describing what, what the Ark was for. Um, Moses put the Ten Commandments in that Ark, which they're down there in that cave right now, according to Ron. There, 1 Kings 8 9, there was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone that Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. So that's talking about when Moses led him into the wilderness and he went up onto Mount Sinai, got the two tablets. Well, that's what was put in there, and to this day, that's what's still in there. Uh, Joshua 6 8, and just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of, of ram's horns, the shofars, uh, before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord following them. And you read in Revelations, it tells you that there's going to come a point where um, there will be, uh, the seventh trumpet will blow. And then that's whenever everybody gets taken up. Um, and the end, end of that stuff, all the stuff in the tribulation is, is coming up to happen. Um, well, they had the seven horns also proceeding before the Ark of the Covenant. Well, the Ark of the Covenant is about to come out and be put into the temple when they build that temple up. You all watch. Everybody's going to get to see it. <laughs> Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand 
to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. That's talking about at the end, when everything's done, and God comes and claims his people, the his chosen people, Israel. That's talking about what you know what's going to happen at that time. So, where is it? Well, there's a um, school of thought that it is in a temple in Ethiopia. Ethiopia has one of the oldest Christian religions in the world still active. Um, several people have tried to sneak into that tent, and they all end up dying because there's a guy in there waiting to kill them. Well, nobody's officially come out and said, "Hey, this is what I saw in there." Now, there may be some form of Ark in there, but that is not the Ark of the Covenant. Because the Israel, the, the Israel, the Jewish people wouldn't allow it to be in Ethiopia. And when you read through the Bible, when they talked about when they took it and they hid it, when the destruction of the first temple happened, it doesn't describe them taking it that far away. Um, it actually describes them pretty much keeping it where it was at. Um, where does it belong? It belonged in with the Jewish people. It belongs with the Jewish people, and it belonged in the temple. But when things started to change in the world, when when they denied God, everything got messed up. Now, in this end time we're, we're coming up to, it's going to be taken and put into the third temple. And then what's going to happen is is that um, it's when that temple gets defiled. Well, God's going to come. He's going to take all that all of his stuff back and all that away. Um. So right now. It belongs to God, <laughs> and it really belongs up there. He has a spiritual version of it, but um, we're going to get to see what happens to it here before long. Uh, who can see it? Uh, according to Ron White, there are angels that are down there guarding it right now. Um, according to Jewish tradition, only the tribe of Levi can have access to it and have uh, and can touch it, and. Um, Nobody at this point can get down there to see it, but when they bring it out, the whole world's going to get to see it. Everybody will get to see it, and they'll get to see the Ten Commandments, especially after the Beast's Law is enacted, and that's going to be the Sunday Law. And that law, and this is not known information to very hardly any people, but that law is going to be from the one world religion that is going to encompass all religions. It's primarily going to be... Uh, Christianity and Islam mixed, but all religions will be accepted into it, and that and the Pope has already got that started, and a bunch of, of other countries are already on board with it. They're just waiting to kick it into gear. The chip is going to help. He's going to be part of that, kicking that off. But they're going to have a law that's going to come out saying you have to worship on Sunday. You have no choice, and everybody will get to see the Ten Commandments when that happens. So that's little known knowledge that is out there. You can find it. It's real easy to find it. Um, the beast law, yeah, whenever that comes into effect, everyone will get to see the Ten Commandments and the Ark. They'll, they'll display all of them. All this stuff is lined up. We're just waiting for it to start happening. And th this year and next year, you're going to see all of it start to happen. Get into the Bible. Read it. Do your research online. You'll see it for yourself. Uh, what's in the Ark? The Ten Commandments are in the Ark. Uh, used to be the Spirit of God existed there, but because of all the events that have happened over history, uh, he, he hasn't involved himself with it. In the end, all that's going to be done away with, and then God will be down here with us. And the temple, everything will be down here with us. So, at that time, I don't know, I'm not sure, because I haven't read much on it. I'm not sure if the Ten Commandments will be kept into it, or if there will be a new law, or what's going to happen. Uh, probably be still under be the old law, but because of Jesus, there will be some changes made to it. But the basic principles are still going to be there. How is the ark important? Well, the ark is important because when the third temple is built, they can have everything. They've got the red heifer, the harps, the all the furniture and everything. They can build that whole temple. If they don't have the ark, they can't proceed forward into, into the tribulation because that is one of the key elements to the old law because they have to sacrifice the animals after confessing sins on the on the head of the animal, they sacrifice the animal, take the blood and sprinkle it on the mercy seat. 
And that's a covering for sin. And we know now we don't need that because Jesus Christ died for all of our sin. There's no need for that anymore. But the old school Jews don't realize that. So this is all, all this stuff has to happen because of Bible prophecy. And then at the end, it'll all be done away with and we won't have to worry about it. So it's really important that they have it, which we know they have it. And it's really important that it is brought into play at the end because it's part of all the end time scenarios and actions that are going to happen. So, you can go in the Bible, there's so much in the Old Testament, especially about the Ark of the Covenant, talking about what happened, where it went, who moved it, what went on around it, um, and I just, I couldn't even get into all the scriptures that there are in there, but just know that it has been found, they do know where it is, they have it, they're ready to take it and put it in the temple as soon as they build it. All the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. So I hope something in this video blessed you and inspired you. Uh, what I want more than anything out of these videos is for somebody to get inspired to go research this stuff. To go look it up. Because if you prove it to yourself, you can take that and you can go out and you can start preaching the kingdom. Like so many more of us that see are starting to do. Because that's our job now is to preach the kingdom to the whole world. Everybody. And so people will know. So people don't go into judgment saying i don't know well actually you did because people stood out there and they they tell, told you what it was and you didn't listen to them they won't have an excuse that's our duty as christians so get involved guys get on fire for jesus christ get on fire for preaching the kingdom get out there and start talking to people put up your own videos on youtube get the information out there to get people to start thinking to get them to start looking to get them to start reacting Get in prayer, get in fasting, get, start getting yourselves ready, because now is the time. This is the end. We're in that last hour. You've got to prepare yourselves, and you've got to be ready for when he comes, and be ready for anything that comes up in the next few years. We're going to see some things before we're taken out of here, but if you're prepared, you already know what it is, you know it's coming, because you've read and done your research, and you know what to look for, and whenever it comes upon you, you look up. Tell the Lord, I've done everything that I can. I'm here now. And you ask for peace. And you sing songs to the Lord and praise Him. And then everything goes from there. So I love you guys. I hope you watch the rest of the videos. i got a few more to do. Probably have to think about six or seven to do. Uh, I hope you watch them and I hope you get something out of them. At the very least, if you get inspired to go and research, that makes me happy. Um, if you are wrestling with that decision of becoming a Christian and you decide to step over that threshold that's even more makes me happy so i uh, love you guys and i will see you in the next video